Not all squash are created equal, and that's an understatement. Before I grew different squash varieties myself, I would never have guessed the spectrum of squash possibilities. The white patty pan squash, also called a scallop squash, is an edible treasure you can grow. Its unusual shape may cause confusion to those who've never seen one, but its superior taste and texture and relative ease of cultivation will make it a garden favorite. It was a prized Native American squash, and I can see why. It's a shame it's not usually found in your local grocer. It looks like an alien sea creature or even a cuddly futuristic cartoon character, but in the world of squashes, I would crown it king. This was my first time harvesting the squash. I could not wait to try it. I harvested a white eggplant that happened to be growing by its side and started to formulate a recipe in my mind. I wanted a quick summer meal that would use the best from the garden. I made it my goal to use as many elements from the garden, a truly fresh from the earth dish. I wanted to taste the pure flavor of this squash. Pan searing it with a bit of olive oil seemed like the right method. Using a sharp knife, I cut thick slices of about half an inch or so. These short patty pan squashes are usually harvested and eaten when really small, when only a couple of inches. I suppose they are even more tender then. Harvesting them at the stage I did still turned out tender and delicious. The seeds were still undeveloped and the skin was not hard. And by waiting for them to develop, I had more squash to enjoy. To accompany the squash, I cut the white eggplant also into thick slices. The eggplant was perhaps a bit too mature and had a thicker skin. I peeled it and cut off some of the blemishes that only proved its organic provenance. I added olive oil into a cast iron skillet and then dropped the slices of eggplants and squash to be seared. I added no salt in the beginning to lock in the flavor as the slices cooked. Adding salt has the effect of drying out natural juices through osmosis. By waiting to add salt until vegetables have seared and caramelized will prevent your dish from getting soggy and watery and not caramelizing. It is important to turn these vegetables often using a spatula. You want it to be brown but not burned. This will add complex flavors. I decided to make a garden fresh sandwich using the seared squash and eggplant as the main flavors. I chose a hearty rye bread, but any rustic bread is a good choice. Once the slices of squash and eggplant were developing a deep golden color, I sprinkled salt to season them. I also decided to add freshly picked dill seeds from the garden. This would infuse a strong flavor that I enjoy. But you can use cumin or paprika if you desire. I let the slices further infuse with flavor as I toasted the bread. Once cooked, I reserved the squash and eggplant and went about building the sandwich. Estou navegando always, flutuando preso talvez. Ondas de gente vão e vendem, varas de pipo que não tem. Será que passo agora? Será que mando embora? A bed of fresh, tender chicory leaves would add color and crunch to the sandwich. These greens were also harvested from the garden. Were it not for the store-bought bread and oil, this would truly be a local eats. You actually couldn't make it any more local without having to eat directly from the plants outside. Over the chicory layer, a couple of slices of an heirloom tomato would add zinc and umami flavor, as well as sweetness to the dish. A white cucumber, which like the tomato had been grown right outside my door, would provide crunch and coolness. Lengthwise slices seemed like the right fit here. These were white Holland cucumbers, divine in taste and texture. A novel variety I had tested this season and more than approved for further cultivation. They keep tender and crispy as they mature and do not have a bitter taste. It's a shame that they don't sell these in stores also, but even if they did, 
They would never be quite as fresh and crunchy as when picked just a few minutes previously. Over the better fresh garden veggies, I added the pan seared slices of squash and eggplant, dressing the whole thing with a squeeze of lime. The lime juice will highlight the flavors, intensifying them and making them mix together. I've always liked lime since I was a kid. I suppose I was a peculiar kid. A bit of olive oil and salt to taste is all that is needed to finish this sandwich. Granted, it's a simple recipe, but the secret is not the recipe, but in the quality of the ingredients. I compressed the sandwich by applying a bit of pressure with my hands and cut it in a diagonal using a sharp knife and a sawing motion. This just makes the whole thing look more fancy and appealing. And it's not every year that I'm lucky enough to have fresh tomatoes and cucumbers producing at the same time. Usually my tomatoes are only starting to ripen by the time my cucumbers have decided to quit. Where I live, cucumbers like spring and tomatoes like late summer. So only on occasion do the twain meet. This was a special occasion and I made sure to enjoy it. I've got to admit, my mouth was watering and I couldn't wait to sink my teeth into this one. The patty pan squash, the star of the dish, exceeded my expectation. I had never tasted a summer squash as buttery and rich in flavor. I highly recommend growing it. It produced well for me, and I enjoyed several of them before the plant started showing signs of impeding doom. Towards the end of summer, some of the leaves showed insect damage and the culprit was the bright orange Mexican beetle. There were also signs of powdery mildew, and I knew its days were counted. I decided to not fight it and let nature take its course. A couple weeks later, the squash vines had finally succumbed. The final squash was still hanging in its end. The plant did not want to die, but I knew it would. While I could eat it at that stage when it's typically harvested, I wanted my last meal of patty pan squash to be more sizable. So I took the risk and let the plant fight it and pull all of its last vital energy into this fruit. By leaving it maturing in the vine, I was risking the ravages of the neighborhood marauding groundhog having the last laugh. However, after some days, I returned to collect my bounty. Sure, the vine had completely withered, but there lay my treasure. It had doubled in size. My risk had paid. I was happy. I could have more to celebrate as my last patty pan squash meal. Of course, I would know that next year I needed to grow more than just one plant of this variety, for it is certainly worth it. I was learning. <laughs>